Thank you for this opportunity to address the Russian people on the 20th anniversary of the adoption of the Russian Constitution. This document signaled a new era of freedom for the Russian people and created a new force for democracy in the world. While more time has passed since the United States created our own constitutional freedoms, we never forget the joyful optimism that marked the beginning of our democratic history. We wish our Russian friends that same hope and pray for you the strength to preserve these first precious freedoms. Today, you're engaged in a historic debate about the possible expansion of your freedoms. Should the Russian people have the right to bear arms? I can share with you a word about what this particular freedom has meant to Americans and offer you encouragement as you consider embracing that freedom, which so many nations and cultures have found to be the essential defense for all other freedoms. Enshrined in the American Constitution is the right of our people to keep and bear arms. But even in America, like Russia today, this specific detail was not included in our original statement of rights and freedoms. So our founding fathers wisely added it in the Second Amendment, part of the Bill of Rights, to our Constitution at the time of the adoption of the entire document. This right has assured Americans of their freedom to engage in two critical acts of survival, the gathering of food and the protection of their families by all appropriate means. Our right to bear arms does not detail what types of arms those may be, an important point that allows for both the evolution of technology and the evolution of responses to threats not then or yet imagined. Our Second Amendment also implies a partnership between our citizens and our government. Our Second Amendment recognizes that while our Constitution provides for the national government to assume the responsibility for our national defense, it cannot always be everywhere present for the protection of individual citizens. By granting individuals the right to bear arms, our national government does not relinquish its responsibility for ensuring the safety of its people. Rather, it delegated a means of providing that safety to the citizens themselves. This partnership has endured for over two centuries to the benefit of the government and the governed. Were the Russian national government to grant a broader right to bear arms to its people, it would be creating a partnership with its citizens that would better allow for the protection of mothers, children, and families without in any way compromising the integrity of the Russian state. That is my wish and my advice to your great people as you celebrate your constitutional anniversary and exercise one of your many new freedoms by engaging in this debate today. Thank you for your time and good luck on your journey into a new century of freedom.